Let's start by talking to two of those soap sex symbols. First, for five years, you knew him as Patch on Days of Our Lives. And most recently, he's played psychoanalyst Skylar Gates on Santa Barbara. Please welcome Stephen Nichols. I guess, I guess they heard of him. All right, all right, fantastic. Let's start with you, Stephen. Yes. Uh, ha, ha, ha. Sex symbol. What do women see in you? Tell me about that. What do you see that they see in you? How do you evaluate that yourself? What do women see in me? Nope, well, you know, I think the humility. Huh? They get they get very serious about these characters we play because we're on somewhere between three and five days a week, so they feel that they get to know us and uh, that they can come up on the up to us on the street and say hello and I think they're more enamored with the images that they see on television rather than the, the people that we really are. You object to this label uh, a sex symbol the way some women do? No, hey, it's better, <laughs> than, <laughs> pays better the bill, than a sharp so. stick in the eye, isn't it? <laughs> I, I don't mind at all. All right, give us, uh, give us some stories how far fans have gone, what stands out in your mind, something that's happened to you along the way. Well, a couple of summers ago I was in Australia um, on a little business tour for a magazine, one of the soap magazines there. And I was at a mall, there was something like 6,000 screaming fans there. And when I got out on the stage, a woman ran up and locked herself, <laughs> death lock, death grip, on my legs. And it took like four big burly guys, Australian guys, to pull her off. Uh oh, hey, and hey, later that evening, don't get any funny ideas here, you know. Later that evening, I was in another city doing a talk show, the Steve Vizard show, which is like a David Letterman of Australia, in another city. And I said, "Yeah, there was this woman today at the mall. She grabbed onto my legs, and and she goes, hey! She was in the audience, <laughs> screaming. She was like, you know, hundreds of miles from the original point. She found. And she it. apologized, and she wasn't really out of it. She was just, you know." Mm -hmm. Just a normal, normal yeah, viewer. Yeah, of course. Very normal. Uh, how about your personal life, your family? I just saw an article today, there's some research now going on by the medical establishment. What happens to your kids, your wives, when you go into public and how it affects, affects all of you? Yeah, going into public uh, is sometimes difficult. Amusement parks are hard. And I, I sometimes have to go in disguise because if I don't, I can't enjoy the park with my family as a family. I mean, we just can't be a family. I'm, it's, it's a whole different... Uh, uh, feeling, you know, so I, I do disguise myself so that they can enjoy themselves with me as their father. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. I, I don't tell us what the disguise is, probably curly blonde or something like that. We'll be looking for you. you All right. We're back. We're talking about women's attraction to the men on soaps, and we're here with two of your favorite men, Stephen Nichols and Gerald Hopkins. Also here, soap opera expert Bryna Laub and psychiatrist and author of Getting Off the Merry-Go-Round, Dr. Carla Perez. Please welcome all of them. All right, Stephen, before we go any further, you got a fan letter there. Let's hear your fan letter. I that know, bad, huh? it says, I know I dreamed that you were at the gates of heaven waiting for me. You will always be a part of me on earth and in heaven. You are the best man in my life. Hold me in your arms, never let me go. Isn't that, that sweet? It is more, I know, but you can, uh, we'll skip that part. Oh, yeah, that, we, is that, we is that typical, the kind of letters you would write? Uh, no, no, not these folks here. All right, Brian, you started Soap Opera Newsletter over 10 years ago. Uh, condense for, for us, for me, for someone who doesn't understand, what, what is the appeal? What's going on it was here? 22 years ago. Uh -huh. 22 years, yeah. you admit it, huh? The appeal, uh, particularly to young people, is that uh, it used to be that people lived three-generation families were a common thing, and people lived and died within 40-mile radius. Now families are across the country, kids go across country to school, grandparents aren't in the same town, and people actually look to these soap operas to extend their family and to give them to a sense of continuity, particularly if you've got divorce in your family. Mm -hmm. So you identify with men that you know that you can count on who won't abandon you, and that's whether you're a girl or a boy. Okay, AJ's the kind of man yeah. you can count on here? No, then the woman who sees herself her life going just like her mother's. She would love it if somewhere there was a safe bad boy that by falling in love with her she could save him. 
Okay. You know? Dr. Perez, I, I find this interesting. I remember talking to uh, someone once who said they moved to another town and all there was was a soap. You know, she was isolated socially and this was home, this was family. Can, can this ever become unhealthy? I mean, wh wh when does it cross the line to when we should be thinking about it? Well, sure, Dean. Wh when you're neglecting your own life and instead the soaps are more important, like this letter sends the chills down my back a little bit. I mean, it borders, in fact, that one borders on a little psychotic, a little I bit. I didn't choose it, by the way. Yeah, but it's, a, it's almost a stalker kind of letter. <laughs> yeah. But again, if you either are in no relationship or in a relationship that's not good and the soaps are more real and, you, and that's your whole excitement center of the day, that's too bad. Or you have a terrible job and the excitement, the fun of your day is the soaps. So it's when it's an escape from life that I'm a little yeah. concerned. All right, we need, a, we need an addict up here. Those of you who watch soaps, let's see, raise your hands. Raise your hands. Stories, too, but, uh, no, I, you know, I, I would have no problem with dating a fan. Um, I w as long as, you know, they were in love with me for me rather than me as AJ, you know. Yeah, as long as our relationship was based in reality. How do you know? I just have to feel no, my I way. No, I think that's you know? that's right. Let's see. Because you have power. I mean, there's someone so excited and interested in you for who you represent, and it's an ego trip for you. Unless but she keeps saying, "Thank God you're not like that horrible AJ." <laughs> yeah. Yeah, maybe then he really okay. is. Ooh, there's a secret, huh? All right, let's talk yeah. some more here. I have a question for Steve, and I want to know. I remember you used to watch Days of Our Lives all the time, and you and Hope had some pretty steamy love scenes. Yeah. What's it like to go home and your wife or your lover is sitting there, and you, and you know, I'm watching this on TV and watching that. What's it like to come home and explain to her? Yeah, how does she, how's the little lady handle this kind of stuff? Well, it's actually a real turn on for my wife and for me. I think, you know, you, you're on the set and you're with this beautiful woman and you go home. My wife is an actress, so she understands this kind of thing. She knows that if she does a love scene, she can't come home and hear me complain and moan about it. So she can't do that to me. She's, you know, if you're respectful of one another and there's trust in the relationship, the love scenes on television don't mean anything. It's part of the job and that's just all it, takes it is. It's kind of a special kind of relationship, yeah. I guess, on both sides. When we come back, we'll talk more about the signs of soap addiction and talk to our guests. Stay with us. Gambler. A, an addictive gambler and and just a casual gambler yeah. and like you, Brian uh, is like professional. See, I'm not an addict because I get paid for it. You get so. paid for it. That's different. <laughs> Are you, uh, Carla? You've brought us a list of a couple of things people should know about questions to ask themselves to see if it's going overboard here. Let's show let's show people what these things are. First of all, are soaps the most exciting thing in your life? All right. If they are, you maybe you're, you're you're going too far with it. Are you neglecting the most important issues in your life because of the soaps? Do you go into serious withdrawal if you miss a soap? Some important kinds of uh, important kinds of questions. Okay, let's uh, talk to the audience here. Hands, questions. You have a question, sure. Exactly how much do you have to bear when you're in the bedroom scene? Oh, you had to ask. <laughs> what, do you mean, what do you mean, how much? I mean, well, it looks like they have to take quite a bit off. Uh -huh. You mean the women? No, Men no, women. you guys, men and women, go for it. Uh, I th usually it's. It if you're under the covers, uh, me personally, if I was ever under the covers, I would just have my pants on. Nobody would ever know. Uh, a couple times we'd play around and, and f you know, uh, surprise each other. <laughs> just and, just and, for the and, fun and, of it, you know. It's a family show. Yeah. Yeah. Calm down with the, the surprises we don't need. Yeah, you had a question. After everything you've gained, would you trade it all in just to be the average citizen? Yeah, do you hate just being the guy that attracts all attention on the street? You sometimes say, oh, I'd like to do something normal. Some days, yes, I feel that way. Other days, I, I feel very grateful for everything that I have and, and everything that has been given to me. Uh -huh. uh, I think like everybody else, we have... Uh... about your private lives for a second. Tell us something special for the Dr. Dean show only, something you fans have never heard before about yourself. Stephen, you go first. Some secret never been shared before, even in Brian's well, newsletter. I have a beautiful, brand-new baby girl named Dylan Selena Nichols. She's a year old, and she's in the middle in that photograph. Uh, Vanessa is the other girl in the picture, and Aaron is my son uh, on the right side. And Dylan was conceived through a miraculous operation called a vasectomy reversal, which I had performed, and four months later, my wife was pregnant. I went to a wonderful man. <laughs> Dr. Sherman Silver. Sherman the sperm is his name. <laughs> Sherman the sperm. Howling, how old are we? Oh, okay, I'm in my mid-twenties. Mid-twenties. Oh, yeah. They like that. Yeah. Judging from the... You pushed him, Steve, with that, so you're going to have to fess up now. I'm 41. 41? Come on. Yeah. 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 Yeah
Yeah, and I, I'm 85, except I take care of myself. <clears throat> we'll be back with some final thoughts and house calls. Stay with us. <laughs>